Hello, uh, in this video I will talk about this physics uh, group of properties here. Uh, they allow you to control your dynamic simulation behavior. And first property here is material type. And I will show these four spheres to show how material type affect to your uh, object mass. Also, you can see there is a mass group of properties. And right now it's set to mass by to material density, which means that object will get material by depends on which material type you set here. So this sphere has heavy metal material and this sphere has has the same size and it has wood material. If I will start play mode when this object uh, will be initialized, they will get collider and rigid body. And as you can see, material of metal sphere is much higher than material of wooden sphere. Also, as you can see, there is a big in, bigger wooden sphere here and it also has bigger uh, mass relative to the small wooden sphere, but less than this uh, metal sphere. So uh, using this heavy metal, uh, using this material type uh, presets, you can define uh, mass of your objects instead of applying it by on yourself. But if you want to use your own mass, then you can set, like in this sphere, you can set mass by to mass property here and define the mass you want to apply. In this case, it will apply to rigid body mass you want. So this is uh, how mass, uh, how you can define mass using this material type property. Uh, the next uh, group of property is uh, friction. And just like with mass, you can see that I have here concrete cube, ice cube, and there is a custom material. So um, again, if you will select this box, you will see that uh, this material uh, field is uh, none, set to none, because it has no any material right now. But when you will uh, start play mode, every object will get its own material. Uh, this object is not initialized yet, so let me initialize them. So now you can see they get their uh, own material here. As you can see here, it's set to concrete now. And the same material is applied to mesh collider here. Every material has its own friction and bouncing properties. So if I will st uh, start playing, you'll see that uh, ice sphere slides down and concrete, I mean, uh, ice cube slides down and concrete cube stays at its position because its friction is much higher than ice. And for this cube, I used my custom material uh, which I created my uh, myself here. So this is a way to apply your own uh, physics material to object. As you can see, this uh, object has none material, but for this third group, I created this custom material and applied it here. So when I start play mode, I'm, uh, I'm using I'm using a uh, preset material for these two cubes, but for this one, I'm using my own custom material. So in this way, you can apply different uh, materials to your simulated objects or use uh, material by presets, again, using by using this material type property. And next property is bounciness. And just like with uh, friction, again, here I have my heavy metal, material type for this sphere and for this I set it to rubber. So when object will be initialized, they will get different uh, materials for their colliders. This one has heavy, got heavy metal material and this one got rubber material. Next property is solidity. And solidity is property which allows you to, to define how fragile object will be in case you want to demolish them. So for, let's say I have two identical cubes again, and this one is has dense rock material. It's solidity is multiplier set here to one. And this cube has glass material here and it's solidity is also set to one. But if I will start play mode, uh, when they fall down, you can see that uh, object with glass material was demolished, but object with, kind of with dense rock material was not. This is because every material has its own solidity. 
And let's say if I will inc uh, decrease solidity here for my concrete, and I increase it for my glass. So maybe this time it won't be demolished. Now you see that because I decreased solidity multiplier for uh, dense rock, it was demolished, but glass wasn't because its solidity multiplier was higher. So in this way you can uh, play with uh, solidity of your object by checking different material types and then adjusting uh, solidity multiplier here to make your object more or less fragile. And next property is destructible property. It uh, allows you to define uh, if object should be demolished or not. So it won't, uh, let's say this cube, I set here material type to light metal. And I can set it to very low solidity, very, very low value. And in this case, I'm using concrete. And even with high solidity property, you can see that when I start play mode, metal object wasn't demolished, but concrete uh, cube was. This is because uh, metal objects, objects with metal material presets, material type cannot be demolished no matter how low their solidity will be. And in this refire manager, there will be a special tutorial about it. So this is where you can define all this material presets property for all the materials, like should they be demolished or not. Let's say here's a concrete and here's metal. You can see that uh, metal cannot be demolished and the concrete can be. This is where you can define their uh, global solidity, value, and density, and other properties. Uh, so let's move to next property, next group of properties, and this is a collider. And again, that's very simple. Uh, here I have three objects, a sphere, cube, and this uh, noisy sphere. So this is where in collider type, in collider properties where we can define the collider which they will get. So again, for this one, I set it to sphere. This one, I set it to mesh. Actually, it should be, should be box. And this one, I set to mesh. And when I start play mode, so this is, you can see how they behave. So this got sphere collider. This noisy sphere got mesh collider. Well, and uh, this box got box collider. So that was uh, physics group of properties. Uh, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching.